the Bespin Guard. Halt, strangers. Take us to Lando Calrissian. Follow me. From Kenner's Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection. Action figures each sold separately. I'm Lando. Who's there? Han Solo on a mission with Rebel Soldier. What's your mission? We're fighting the Empire, and we need your help. Han Solo, Rebel Soldier, Lando Calrissian, and Bespin Guard, each sold separately. From Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection. New from Kenner. More fun than an empty chair at the Republican National Convention. <laughs> Welcome to the next con. <laughs> you know, it's funny that I couldn't record what you were doing on Skype while that commercial was running. <laughs> that commercial was awesome. <laughs> yeah, Casey's just doing her little motions on the camera. D d do the other one. You were doing the thing with the gun. Yeah. <laughs> Who goes there? It is I, Han Solo. Pew, pew, pew. <sighs> I am Michael Gaines. Welcome to the Nexicon episode seven. And with me is Casey Coglin. Oh, Casey Coglin, what's going on with you? Oh, not much. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Guild Wars is out, and the auction house is still down. Oh my god, the auction house! You know, the funny thing is that the damn thing was running during beta. I know they did only like a billion stress tests. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they forgot to stress test their auction house server and the wiki server, <laughs> both of which are, well, the auction house has been totally down the entire time. Yeah. Wiki is intermittent. If you refresh it a few times, you might get lucky. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the uh, Guild Wars when we get into the quest log, but my big news, I'm going to start with my big news because I just like that. <laughs> go ahead last week i said that i was going to the season seven premiere of doctor who in new york city and i went and it was amazing and mm -hmm. it was fun and the it theater, was amazing and fun it was like, amazing and fun okay it was amazing because it was amazed and it was fun because it was fun well we'll check both of those off your list <laughs> Uh, we went to the Ziegfeld Theater in New York City on 54th Street, which is a beautiful theater. And it looks like they had the entire place just used for BBC America for a couple of hours. And watching a TV episode on the big screen was a little strange. I had done that before with Star Trek Next Generation a few months ago. But this is the first time that I saw um, HD 16 by 9 um, because the next gen is still four by three and it's, it's almost as if like you're watching a movie as opposed to just like a, a TV show on the big screen. It was, uh, they did a really good job with this and the presentation was great. Matt Smith, Karen Gillan was there. We're there. Um, looking all hot. what looking all hot look well, Karen was, I, I, I guess Matt was, but yeah, Karen was looking hot. She had a nice smoking dress on mm. and, uh, they did a little Q and a thing with, uh, the nerdist was there. Chris, he was there. As he is in like tons of stuff. It seems like any nerd event, all this nerdist has to be there. You know, nerd like, all the things. I know. He's everywhere now. It's crazy. <laughs> so but what did they show up in? This is the best part. All right. So we're sitting inside and I'm looking to see what's going on outside on, on Twitter on my phone. And I see that they show up. They're they're they drove up in DeLoreans. Yes, that's the best. How classic is this? It's so best. So they bring everybody out. Uh, 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 it was, uh, um, I, bl I blanked on her name yesterday. Caroline, uh, she's one of the producers of the show. Uh, okay. Matt and Karen come out and they make this statement. They say, please don't spoil it. Uh, we don't want anybody to know the big thing. And I'm not going to say what the big thing is, but there's Karen. a thing. Oh, is they're, it big? They're keeping, they're keeping something secret. Well. Like, oh, okay. That is pretty much the definition of a spoiler. <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, so uh, we're going to respect that, and we're not going to talk about it. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it afterwards. We're not going to talk about Doctor Who every damn week, but uh, I think after... If you can help it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the premiere is on Saturday night on BBC America. Uh so so Matt says, please, 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 please don't spoil the big thing. 
Like, okay, so I won't spoil the big thing until after Saturday. Mm -hmm. And they had people, the lights went down, everybody starts screaming. They started playing previews of stuff that's on BBC America. And David Tennant is in this new show called Spies of Warsaw. Every time he comes on screen, the girls are going, what? Oh, my God, it was worse than the Taylor Swift concert that I had to go to with my kids. <laughs> and it was fine. I, I, I got a laugh out of that. Uh, and then the show starts and everybody just starts screaming during the credits. And, and it was just great. It was a lot awesome. of fun. Then they had a little Q&A thing afterwards, which was good. That'll be on the Nerdist YouTube channel on Saturday. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we can kind of see a little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, awesome. There's a promo um, video. I don't. I think it's on the Nerdist channel also on their YouTube channel. I watched it. I'm in there somewhere. You can see me. I'm a little dot. <laughs> I don't want to brag or anything, <laughs> but you know. No, I'm just saying that I, I was looking for myself just to see if, if I was there. As they must did. have taken some shots just before we got there because mm -hmm. there are some people that I saw online that were close to us. So they must have filmed it and then we got there. No big deal. Oh. But uh, yeah, I was, I was stoked. I like it because after, after watching uh, Doctor Who here in the United States for so many years, and it was sort of like behind Star Trek, behind Star Wars, now it's sort of got the forefront of everything. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see the show that I watched as a kid finally getting the recognition that it deserves. Yeah. So. It's come full circle. It has. And I was very happy about it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. I took some pictures and um, that's that's about it. That's all I can really talk about without spoiling the spoilers. <laughs> well, there's another big nerd event coming up. A re-release in 3D. Mm -hmm. What's this? As you take a drink. Yes. Good job, Casey. I thought, no, that's my fault, not yours. <laughs> this past February, Star Wars Episode One played in the theaters in 3D. And the idea was that they're going to release one every year. And I thought to myself, really? They're going to do this for six years? Oh, well, why not stretch it out? You know, uh, as much, I don't know, I'll tell I it's bang for their buck and anticipation built up, <laughs> hype, sweat, and brah. I'll tell you why. Because the kids that are watching it now are going to be too old to care by yeah. the time the last one is out. So I think what the, they're smart. What they're doing next year is they're going to do episodes two and three back to back um, in uh, September and October of 2013. So Attack of the Clones in, 2000, uh, in September and then Revenge of the Sith in, 2000, uh, in, in October. Mm -hmm. So I think this is smart because... Now they'll probably have episode four, the original Star Wars, in 2014. I think that's good. If they can do uh, four, five, and six back to back, I, I don't know how much time it takes to really do these, but if they can do yeah, it, yeah, it depends. I think the main hindrance is probably on how much it's gonna, how long it's going to take to re-render these in 3D. Yeah, I don't know how many monkeys they've got working on this, but we'll see. We'll see. But I, I'm I'm very interested to see what they do with Star Wars. I know there are a lot of people out there that are against 3D. I totally get it. But from a technical point of view, I want to see it. I think just out of curiosity, yeah. a lot of people who love the franchise and maybe, yeah, are against the remaster, are against 3D, but still... You're going to go see it just to see. <laughs> You're going to see. Your curiosity is going to get the best yeah, of Yeah, Exactly. I saw episode one in 3D in the theater, obviously, and it was, they did a good job with the 3D. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, retarded. It right. wasn't just unnecessary 3D. Right. right. So I was very happy with it, and but still it's Jar Jar and... Yeah, there's still Jar Jar. They really? didn't edit him out. I'm telling you, that movie would have been much, much better if they just ripped... Well, not not so much... Not so much Jar Jar altogether, but the way he spoke and how silly he was. If if they, I'm not gonna get. Yeah. Him. I feel a rant coming, so I'm gonna stop. Mm -hmm. Because nothing's gonna change that. No, nope. Mm. Mm. Much as you wanted to, anyways. And nothing is going to change Twitter's mind in going back on what it has done now. Twitter, I don't understand what they're doing. I mean. I've been trying to keep up with this whole well, Twitter I thing. I can understand what they're doing. It just seems like way too late. Mm -hmm. Twitter is now... Well, let me let me take a couple steps back. 
they're changing their API in such a way where they're almost preventing, well, not almost, they're preventing third-party apps from being created. They're kicking them out the door. They yes. want all the glory to themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's after years of having that kind of community and ecosystem where third-party developers can write apps for it, have, you know, they put the API out there for people to use and mm -hmm. take advantage of. And that's, I think, part and parcel what has helped Twitter flourish over the years sure and now they're like oh yeah we got to make money so sorry guys this is all ours now we're going to close it down mm -hmm. one of the, the the big things that have made apps like instagram and twitter so popular and 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 prosper so much is the fact that they have an api that people can use now right almost like buying their own stock back, like a company buying their own stock back and going yeah, private. Yeah. That's what Twitter is doing. So what I have in the show notes is sort of like the last, the latest thing that I have, which is that they're now stopping the ability to show what client people are using. It would say Usfora or TweetDeck or, or whatever client. Now they're not even showing it anymore. And I'm thinking, here's, here's what I did today after, after work. I saw an article about app.net and if you don't know what app.net is, it's, um, it's a Twitter competitor that is trying to go after a different monetization model mm -hmm. using a $50 a year subscription fee instead of putting ads in the feed. Right. That's a, that's a damn good way of, of stating it. But there's, there's one thing that I found out today that I didn't realize before is that they're trying to take this infrastructure and not just use it for this micro blogging and, and messaging. They're trying to broaden their horizons on, on what it is that they're going for. So, well, good. So, so good. So what I do, I was really against it for a while. I'm like, ah, oh, oh, by the way, I, um, we recorded, um, uh, the Infinite Loop show yesterday, and I couldn't think of the name of that third-party Twitter, uh, the open source Twitter clone. It was um, Identica. Ah, now you still can't Identica. think of it. Ah. <laughs> Identica. There were a whole bunch of Twitter clones that had come out over the years. I couldn't, while we were recording yesterday, I'm like, it begins with an I. I know it begins with an I, and I couldn't remember it. It was Identica. Oh, Identica, but then it changed it to Laconica or something? Yeah, something. Uh, I, no, I think Identica is based on the... The, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, whatever. whatever. One of the, um, it's not a thing anymore. It's not a thing. Well, <laughs> there, it's still around, but there are so many promises of so sure many Twitter is. clones that had come out over the years based mm -hmm. on we're going to do this differently. We're going to do this better. And then well, what, like a lot of open source projects, it gets mm, a lot of hype in the beginning and then it peters out and it just stays stagnant for yeah. the rest of the time. So I read this, this article today on app.net and uh, a friend of mine who works at Mashable, Christina Warren, uh, she was on it for a while. So I asked her what she thought of it and, and she said she liked it. So I'm like, uh, Oh, now uh, you're going to pay 50 bucks. I did. I oh, paid, you did. I, I paid the 50 bucks and yeah, maybe I would there, I, there are a couple of reasons why one because if it was just a, a twitter clone i wouldn't care I, I don't want another twitter clone i don't need another twitter clone it's like facebook it's, it's like the google plus people trying to pull people from facebook you can't do that yeah facebook is ingrained in people's lives already and you're not going to pull like and i say this over and over again i've got over 300 classmates from my graduating high school Every mm -hmm. almost every single one of them is on Facebook. Not a single one is going to be on Google Plus. Yeah. They, they aren't now. They never will be. And just like that, Twitter is not going to just simply pull people away. There are too many people that love it. There are too many people that use it every day, and too many people depend on it. Yeah. But this article changed my idea of what App.net was going to be because I'm thinking it's it's got a horrible name because you can't verb 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 of you can't turn it into a verb. You get like, I'm going to like tweet, tweet something. Twitter, I right. See, I don't know. What but the you don't have on. like a verb for um, Facebook. Or you're not saying I'm going to go Facebook something. No, but you do have you one say, for Google. Update status or I'm going to go for Google. What? It, like what? Well, share? that's for searching. Yeah. I'm going to Google it. Oh, I'm going to Google it. But for like Google Plus, you don't have like a, no. a post verb. It's just I'm going to share this or post it or. No. So, I mean, most of Twitter is really the only one that has like a kind of a verb for itself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just like you said last night on the Infant Loop show, it's like Kleenex. 
like once you establish something with a with a with an ingrained name like Twitter and Kleenex, it's very difficult to pull people away. So when I read that they're going to try, they're going to call. I mean that that kind of sounds like they're going to call app.net Twitter or Twitter hasn't become like a household name. It's it's more of like a household appliance, but the name hasn't been really ingrained in people. Um, so I mean, I'd say. I don't have a really good analogy for that, but hmm. uh, anyways. So, yeah, I joined because I want to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a look at their API and see what can be done with it. It's cool. so, yeah, no, it's worth a look. Yeah. What's with, uh, oh, I'm going to skip the next one because I really don't care about that right now. Uh, <laughs> and, and you want to get back into uh, Guild Wars 2. Uh, what's this about Samsung bringing back the start menu and, and, and not learning from their mistakes? Yeah, right. So Samsung, just all kinds of silliness coming out of that house. Um, so if you've been kind of following the whole Windows 8 debacle and catastrophicness. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, one of the... I guess one of the many problems people have with Windows 8 is that they're pretty much taking away the start menu mm -hmm. after, what, almost 20 years of the start menu being a thing. You know, we're, we're kind of back to when, what was it, Windows 95 came out and they took away Program Manager and people were... Oh, yeah. Went up about that. Yeah, 95, it, yeah, it's 17 years. Comfortable with the start menu. Oh, guess what? We're getting rid of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Anyway, so people are kind of, you know, being weird about that. So Samsung, in its infinite wisdom, <laughs> has decided to help people, you know, not progress and brought back the start menu in something called the S Launcher. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be available on Samsung products. So, um, yeah, if you want to live in the past, I guess buy a Samsung computer. <laughs> But this S launcher, it's it's not going to launch from the traditional bottom left-hand corner like the start menu always does. It launches from a little icon in the middle of the screen that sits on a little glass shelf. Wait a minute. Trash can. That sounds familiar. Where they would have gotten that idea. It's a pretty slick-looking interface for a little glass dock thing. Hold right on a minute. In the middle, I don't know. They ripped that off from BOS. Yes. <laughs> no, they, they stole that from the Mac. Yeah, window blinds. Mm hmm. <laughs> I wonder if they can get away with you know, window blinds. I wonder if they can get away with it because Windows sort of had their own sort of dock. Because remember, they had that bar on the bottom of Windows XP. Taskbar. The taskbar. Yeah, the taskbar in Windows 95, Windows XP. Seven in Windows Vista. Hmm. But it's a bar. I mean, it's very different than a dock. I, I, I agree. It's pretty. I blame. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. But um, yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it, it just seems like any time manufacturers go and they tack on their own kind of add-on interface, a it is just janky and tacked on like uh what is it gateway does this with their and hp does this with their own like start home screen and it's it's dumb and it's supposed to help you and be easier but it just really obscures the actual mm -hmm. Windows experience what you may or may not be used to and 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 the, again like it's just janky and sometimes <laughs> usually ugly as hell yeah um, and isn't as, you know, isn't more helpful, which is the, is the aim, the overall goal. Mm -hmm. of, and and then secondly, if Windows is trying to move forward or progress in a way, you know, change in a way, you're really kind of hurting that, you know, by by bringing back a an old function. Yeah. You know, like you are a OEM. You know, you're a, a vendor for Windows. Why would you hurt your parent? Yeah, I, I guess. You know, I mean. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. 
Samsung's dependent on Windows for for their OS, obviously. So why would you do something like this to kind of screw them? Mm -hmm. True, I agree with you. Uh, some people are pretty upset that they got rid of the start dock of uh, the start menu. And I I played with Windows eight. I you know I'm I'm pretty good on the upswing with new operating systems and such. But I was just not thrilled to death with Windows eight. I think I'm going to skip it. No, I probably will too. But I. I can definitely appreciate when companies try to do new stuff and, you know, I mean, just roll with it, you know, embrace the new, adapt, learn it and, and move forward. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, be an old person, I guess. <laughs> Don't be an old person. Get off my lawn. And of course, since Casey is our resident Mac person, she does have another Windows 8 story. So <laughs> go with it. Oh, well, I just thought this was kind of cute because who doesn't like Atari games, you know, coming back? Um, Atari and Microsoft are actually teaming up to bring eight classic games uh, to Windows 8 in the Atari Arcade. Mm -hmm. uh, right now this will be on Windows tablets. I suspect it will be in the full version of Windows 8 as well. Um, if not right away, then probably in the um, the marketplace. But... Um, yeah, so it kind of sounds like it's going to be like the um, the iOS app where you download the actual arcade and then within that you can probably, either it'll come with the games or download them within the app. So um, more awesome, you know, 8-bit goodness coming to the desktop. <laughs> and not for nothing, but I already have this stuff with um, my Xbox 360. Yeah. I don't really need it, so I'm probably not going to use it, but... It's good that it's there. I mean, really, what what when Microsoft is doing is they're just they're putting all this content out in as many ways as they can on the on the phone and Xbox and, and now Windows eight. It's gonna be their first foray into the having an app store kind mm -hmm. of. So yeah, they're starting with nothing pretty much. They gotta fill it up really fast to catch up with you know Steam and Apple and everybody else. So sure. how else are you gonna do that? Yeah. And then. Oh, I'm thinking another good reason to have this on the desktop because you can get one of those old school joystick USB <laughs> controllers. I have one. Huh? Yeah, for my Atari 2600. Yeah, plug that into the desktop, then you're ready to rock and roll old school style. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the quest log. Quest complete. Oh, I played the wrong one. You know why? Because I got a new Mac and all my sounds are all messed up. All right, that works. I'll fix it in post. <laughs> yes. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is out. Yay! <laughs> and uh, Casey and I have just been playing the crap out of it. Yeah, I'm way higher level than you. We are way higher, two levels higher. So much higher, you can't even catch up. You can't even... <laughs> Together. Yeah, Casey and I are going to... Um, we're probably going to go right into the game after the show is done. And I'm going to try and catch up. <laughs> I like the fact that, I mean, there was an article kind of denouncing this. What was it on Joystick? Or? Yeah, uh, massively. Massively. Um, somebody wrote an article really kind of denouncing the, uh, the quest and leveling, um, I guess. System. System, yeah, that they, they have in Guild Wars 2 because it's really different and unlike any other MMO to date where you don't have just your random NPCs everywhere with a question mark or exclamation point over their head for a quest. And so you go one by one, do their quest, come back, you know, and, and, and you can kind of level up like that. Where Guild Wars has um, whole area quests so as soon as you walk into uh, an area or a zone or within you know the designated area, the quest pops up in your tracker, you do it, and then there's also world events similar to Rift. Mm -hmm. so, so everywhere, anyway, I mean, there's no NPC to go, and you, you don't even need to go to an NPC to turn it in. It just completes, and you run around and do these. Yeah. So in a sense, like, I really think this is more efficient. It's... It has been for me, and especially since you are automatically leveled up or down depending on the zone that you're in. So if you're too high level, you're automatically lowered down to the highest possible level for the zone. 
So you're still you can still do old quests later, get XP and or play with friends that are lower level. Right. Um, you know, direct. There's no hard and fast um, linear progression. You know, it's just kind of play at your own pace, go wherever you want, explore, do whatever you want, come back here later, go do that. You know, it no big deal. This will be here when you come back. Yeah. Like, to do anything you don't have to like oh i gotta do all these quests before i'm 10 because then they're gonna be gray and i'm not gonna get shit for them yeah the, and- let me um i just want to clarify one thing is that there are there are a couple of npcs that you can turn turn things in remember like the apple quest on the on the west end of queensdale we have to collect apples and you turn them in and you get points for that but they're not like go out and get me 10 apples of them they're like collection ones where they're like yeah find my supplies and bring it to me or yeah but it, it's still not like you're turning in the quest it's like collect my stuff and then give them to me and, and you have like so many um completion points right um they're called renown hearts and and they're all centered around a specific npc so like casey said you you essentially run from area to area and <clears throat> what the game does is it it, it, it lets you explore the map and quest at the same time. So <clears throat> in other games where there's a chain of events and you have to go from point to point to point, to, go find Captain Mallory over on the west side of the thing by the tree and there's a mailbox there. <laughs> that. You don't have that. Epic quest. Yeah, epic quest. So... so now you it, you just do everything on your own, and as you explore, you find, uh, as Casey said, you find the um, the dynamic quests. Um, some of them are escort quests, but before anybody goes nah, escort quests, what happens is a group of people, usually about, I would say, what about ten, twelve people, all get together and they help out. It's not like you're doing it alone. Usually, and even still, like there'll be a couple of guards usually with you on the escort quest. So mm-hmm. even if it's not a total massacre, yeah, and and it pops up on everybody's map. And so a lot of the times, people, you know, if I see it and I'm relatively close, I'll go run and and do it because it I'm going to get XP at any time, you know, I go and do it. And so sure. that's if I'm close, why not? Mm-hmm. And oh god, there are so many things. All right, so there there are the escort quests, there are the dynamic quests, the the renowned heart quests. Um, of course, you can go around killing stuff if you want. Uh, there are uh, veteran NPCs, which are essentially like in in WoW, they'd be called elites, and it, a bunch of people can get together. Each zone has one monster, not monster, but some major NPC, some major monster that you have to kill. There's one in the swamp in Queensdale where uh, Casey and I are are leveling up. What? That one is awesome. It's so epic. It is. And everybody gets together. The Bams and Terra. You mm-hmm. know, be very long. It's it's a it'll start with one of those dynamic quests. It's like a world event, and then it'll trigger yeah. a slightly bigger world event, and then that'll trigger the big boss event, and it's huge. And it's it's a lot like the the bam or the big ass mob in Terra, sure. where it's a huge huge mob and they're epic, and it takes like twenty to forty people, and it takes a good five minutes of just spamming, you know, to to bring them down. And then there, of course, you know, there's just a huge chest um, at the end. And but it's it's a lot of fun, and it makes it really um, interesting. Yeah. Um... When you kill these big ass mobs or whatever you want to call it, these world event mobs, a, a giant chest drops for everybody. You get XP and some other things based on how much you contributed. So if you just got there and threw a couple of bolts, you'll get nothing. Uh, there, you get gold, silver, and copper, bronze, oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and 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 depending on how much you contribute to to the kill of this world boss is how much um, gear you'll get out of the drop of the, the giant chest too. Yeah. <clears throat> I like to the, um, the vistas and the points of interest that you have to clear to, to completely clear a map you or a zone, you need to not only get or do all the renowned 
heart quests mm-hmm. to get all the points of interest. And they're marked on your map. They're like little dots, and they're just just that you know, yeah. interesting points on the map that the developers thought you might want to see. Um, and then there's also things called vistas, mm-hmm. which are like little view movies, and they're usually really um, difficult to get to and Some really are, yeah. hard to reach places. You have to climb and do a lot of... They love platforming in this game. Um, and traditionally, I hate jumping and platforming in MMOs. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> um, usually, you have to do a fair amount of platforming to get to these vistas. And so you have to get, get all of those. And so there's a, there's a hard and fast um, way of knowing that you've cleared a zone. You know, So then you know, okay, I've done everything here. I can move on. There's no kind of lingering doubt or you got run around and explore every corner of the map or you know to get that achievement it's hard and fast and then you also once it's all cleared and you've officially cleared uh, a map you get a chest at the end of that too mm-hmm. they so do okay, and, ahead. Uh, incentives for not just exploring but um yeah finishing everything there's one more thing um well not one more thing i mean we're going to talk a little more about this but um you and i both played everquest 2 in the beginning right mm-hmm. okay I have not seen a community this good since the days of early EQ2. Helpful, yeah. Like, people are super nice and helpful in this game. That's another thing that is kind of surprising, that if you are downed, you kind of can... If you die, you get to be revived, not relying on somebody with a... um, with a res or anything, you just kind of lay there and you, you have a chance to go back to a waypoint and kind of respawn. Or if you just lay there, somebody can come up to you and rub you back to life. <laughs> I mean, nobody, you get reses later on, but early on, you know, anybody can revive you. So if you're in a big group with a, with a big boss or something, you know, or people really just running by, I've, I've just sat in a zone if it was hard to get to and I died, you know, at the very end. I just laid there for like a minute or two and then somebody came by and they're like, oh, and they revived me and, you know, everything was cool. But like people are super friendly, like really help each other out and um, it's a really great community. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to the forums yet, so I don't know what they're like. Um, Well, the beta forums are okay because people were helping each other out. So I'm hoping that the, the, the forums now are good. The game is free to play. And people wonder, well, how they're going to make some money. I'll tell you how. Aviator glasses and top hats. <laughs> Did you buy any of those yet? No, no. I'm. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I want really, really bad. I actually, I want. I more so I want to buy pets. <laughs> here's all right. See, here's what happened. There's there's a gem store, and what you can do is you can buy boosts and services and consumables in the gem store. You can buy. Here's one thing that I absolutely love about this game is that you can dye your armor. So you get your armor with with just like maybe it's red or something like that. And you say, you know what? I want it to be a different color. So I'll sit there just like I do with my houses in EQ2 and the transmog in, in WoW. I'll sit there for an hour and try to find the best dyes for my armor. Mm-hmm. And so you can you can buy things like you can buy. Oh, you have two different types of gear. You have your city gear and then you have your adventuring gear. And so you can buy things. You can buy a cooking outfit, you, which gives you a cooking boost. You can you can buy, uh, like Casey said, a top hat. You can buy aviator glasses. You can buy uh, just different looking gear. Yeah, pirate costume. Pirate costume. You can transmog it all if you want. They just have to be the same type. They give you the ability to do that. You have speed boosts, XP boosts, uh, renown boosts. Uh, what else? They have health boosts. They have anything that, that you want, It's but it's not pay to win extra bank slots yeah uh, stuff like that and so you can either put money into this like real money or money in game you can actually convert your gold in game into gems to spend on this gem store Mm -hmm. and right now it's about 30 silver they actually have just like the stock market they show um a daily run of how much um how much has been sold for one gem. So now it's like 27 or 30 silver per gem. I bet it's going to go down because the auction house is down. So there isn't a easy way for people to make a lot of money. Yeah. That's one 
one kind of downside, I mean, well, there's multiple downsides to the auction house being down still, but, you know, one thing is, is like, if you, I mean, who doesn't just sell all their crap on the auction house and, you know, may, or manipulate it, you know, for monetary gains? Sure. <laughs> I don't know anybody who does that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, the auction house is a good way to make money. And without that, you're relying on money you find and quest rewards. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's a whole lot of gold circulating in the game right now. So that gem cost is probably going to go down. Yeah. How much money do you have in the game right now? Uh, probably got, like 50 silver or something 50, like yeah, that. Yeah, I've got like 40 silver or something like that. Game, money doesn't come very fast. But then I remember in, in, uh, in WoW it didn't come very fast either. Exactly. And just think, you know, in WoW even, if you didn't have an auction house and you're just relying on drops and quest rewards, I mean, Jesus. All right. So you picked which class? My main is a guardian. Right, my main is a elementalist. Of course. <laughs> so, are, why did you pick that class, and why do you like to play it? Um, the guardian. At first, I liked it because it's very flexible. Depending on the uh, weapon, you know, if I use, say, a two-handed greatsword, I'm a pretty good tank. If I choose a scepter or a staff, I'm a really great support slash healer. Mm -hmm. And I wear chains. So I primarily use um, either a mace or a scepter if I'm soloing, you know, mace all the way because it heals me. If I'm supporting, then a scepter. Um, but in a, in a way, I'm totally a cleric. This class is totally a cleric. And I'm traditionally a healer in these games. Um, I, it, I think it's a, one of the best classes. And, well, it's the best healer class even though there's no defined healer class in this game there's really no defined any class in this game there's no defined tanks there's no defined healer i haven't figured out a way to tank as a light armor user you can um, heal you get the elementalist i think is the second best healer in the game but that's you know saying a lot um because like i said there's no defined there's no one that's like this is the healer you get all the heals. Yeah. Like, Guardian has the most, but it's still not, like, a phenomenal healer. It's going to do better than any other class, but um, still, you know, there's no dominant healer. There's no dominant tank. Like, the warrior it comes closest, but the way they've made the warrior, it's more like a DPS warrior. Mm -hmm. And, uh, wow. So, I mean, it can tank, but it's not the best at it. Yeah. And I found, like, that's a lot... Of all the classes, I the way that all right. Let me talk a little bit about the elementalists. The way the element elementalists work is that your base uh, elemental, so to speak, is fire. As you progress through the game, <clears throat> you gain more and more abilities. But apart from that, you can switch between earth, air, fire, and water at any time. Not hard. It's it's amazing. I love how they do this. So so the way that this works is that if you're and, and this happened to me, like I was I was underwater in Kessex Hills somewhere on, on the west side in the lake, and I was shooting fire at some things underwater, and I was doing pathetic damage. And I switched over to air, and then I got on my uh, my like my electric spells, and then I was just blowing the crap out of everything, and so you can switch from one to another if you switch to water. As an elementalist, you have healing spells, so you can be you. You won't be as good of a dedicated healer as a guardian, but I can sit there and I can AOE heal if I wanted to, if I had to. And these are the things that you can do: is that every class in this game can switch and do something different, other than blowing crap up. Right. Yeah. Every class, depending on the weapon you have, like your weapon really changes. But it literally changes all of the skills that you mm -hmm. have. And it, and it kind of changes your role um, in a group or, or in the game accordingly. So, The downside is that you have to keep all those different weapons in your inventory. And you don't have a lot of inventory space when you start. And um, switch them on the fly. Like you can make macros to switch your weapon sets on the fly. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. Uh, I just wish that I had more bag space. Right now, I've got nothing. 
Because again, there's no auction house, so you gotta level up your own trade skilling to uh, make bigger bags. Which I've been doing slowly. Do you need more yeah. bags? Because I can make you more eight slots. That's about as much as I can do right now. Nothing just to make bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. God, what else? So, I'm going through the list here of of some things that we can. Oh, professions. I picked tailoring for the gear and that's helped me a lot and jewel crafting so that i can make myself rings and trinkets and stuff what did you pick um at first i went cooking and artificer but um cooking seems to be one of those that would be better suited after you've explored a lot and collected a lot because right away you cannot buy anything to make the low level recipes mm-hmm from the vendor and you find in low level areas makes squat yeah the, the, they need to fix the trade skilling uh professions That's fine you know i mean if if they're if they're different so long as they're not all like that you know or so long as there's some trades or some professions that say you can do at a low level with low level stuff and and kind of gear up and then there's some that are just you know better suited for after the fact that you've explored a lot and you're just gonna ah, i'm gonna sit down and, and learn cooking now yeah i mean that's fine um so i gave that up and took armor smithing like i said just to make bags um then that that's fine you know okay. art smithing is easy to do at a low level and you can use you know low level stuff right away and just make a ton of stuff so well what i found is that uh i've out leveled my area for my profession so for example um the way that the the professions work is that just like in in all other MMOs uh you can use a particular base material up until a certain level and that level that that tailor well for my, in my case that tailoring level or any profession level should match your adventure level mm -hmm. meaning that you should get as much stuff as you as you can as you're leveling up to get your profession up and, and and be in line with your adventuring. Well, I found that doesn't really happen because I was struggling to find stuff for jewel crafting and tailoring. And there are, uh, I've, I've talked to some other people in the game and they're having the same problem. There are some people saying like, I can't get the, the cloth material called jute. I can't get enough jute to get my tailoring up. You can find uh, okay. copper nodes all over the place but you can't yeah. find the gems which are random inside w when you do the mining to, to level up jewel crafting I mean that's that's a lot like jewel crafting in any other game the gems are much much more rare than the actual ore and cloth is almost always rare because you can't physically like mine or uh, um, you know scavenge it you have to either just find it off a drop or salvage some uh, armor or weapons, and then, you know, you get a lot of cloth that way. But, again, you know, not unlike any other MMO. Mm. I, I'm just finding that it's a little more difficult in this game than others that I've played. But I'll, I'll see. Uh, travel in this game, there are no mounts. Um, you There are travel spots, teleport spots all over the map, so you can just from one spot to another for minimal cost you don't even have to be in a waypoint to to go to another waypoint you can be in the middle of nowhere nowhere near a waypoint and you can just double click one on your map and teleport mm -hmm. so far you can kind of use those as long as you've discovered them obviously you can teleport you know wherever you need to go and the last thing that we're going to say about this is um as as great as the game is it can't come with <laughs> without its problems there are security breaches already. People were getting uh, Trojan emails and some people's accounts were hacked. So now what uh, what ArenaNet is doing is whenever you try to log into the forums, and this happened to me earlier today, try logging into the forums and says, okay, we sent you an email. Let us know that this is really you. And then it says, uh, somebody tried to log in with your account at this IP address. Is this valid? And then you have to say yes or no. They just need to come out with an authenticator like everybody else. Yep, I agree. So right now, we're both in the mid-20s in this game. Uh, what's the max level in this game? Is it 60 or 80? I believe it's 60. All right, so right now, you're going to stick with it? Yeah. I'm sticking with it for a while. I think this is going to be... Uh, well, 
we're going to get to our next our next well minor segment um wow 5.0 is out we'll get to that in a second wow is still going to be my number one mmo but um i think guild wars is is going to be a, a big game for me for a while mm-hmm. um so yeah let, let's talk a little bit about warcraft 5.0 this is this is the pre-patch for mr pandaria it's essentially Mist of Pandaria without the ability to go from 85 to 90. It doesn't have the new dungeons and it doesn't have the new raids. So you can't really do anything at this point. Other than you can do the pet battles, mm-hmm. you get the new talents, yep. um, you just can't get to 90. And you get the panda. You can play the, the race, but not the monk class. Yes. <laughs> Right. Okay. So you can start a Pandaren mage if you want. You can start a Pandaren whatever whatever class matches, uh, whatever classes match the Pandaren you can play. Uh, just not a monk. And similarly, there are human monks, aren't there? Yeah. No, the monk, uh, you know, is a class, so you don't have to be a panda monk. You can be a human or whatever monk. But so it sounds. But none of that is going to be. The the whole class isn't available until the expansion comes out. I want to see an undead monk. <laughs> I know. I just think it'll be silly. Uh, pet battles. I haven't tried this yet. Have you? You haven't tried it yet, have you? I haven't logged into WoW in months. <laughs> okay, forget it. No, I haven't tried pet battles. I'm I'm going to this weekend. Um, Lindy and I are going to talk more about this uh, on Warcast this weekend. Um, all the mounts and pets that you've had on all your accounts are now account wide. What? Oh, oh, account wide. I thought you were gonna say all the mounts you could use in pet battles. I was like, oh what? no. The only ones that are not account wide are, are certain ones that you have to earn in certain ways, like factions and, and things like that. Uh, those are not account wide. Although I haven't checked to see if the violet proto drake that I got from doing what a long strange trip it's been has, has shown up on my uh, druid. What about your um the parrot that drops in um the hyacinth macaw yeah i have not checked that yet that would be i would think that would probably be restricted too no no, no it's just a drop it's an epic drop but it's just a drop mm. well and one dropped for me last week i know I saw- the- oh yeah you saw that uh so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about that on Warcast this Saturday. Lindy and I are going to record a show, but I just wanted to talk briefly about it because I haven't really jumped into it. I checked to see if, you know which add-ons are working. I haven't even gone through my talents yet. I have to go on Elitist Jerks and find out what the best thing is for mages at this point. I heard that Frost Mage has got a serious buff, mm. which is strange because Frost Mages really weren't ever very good in raiding. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Not really. I don't and, remember them. It's always been Arcane or Fire. Oh, maybe he was... I have a friend who was a big PvP maid. Oh, yeah. Played in a few years, though, but I'm pretty sure he was Frost. Yeah, oh, PvP is is uh, Frost for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to talk about on the quest log, there's a leaked picture of a black Wii U... Uh, that's the new console that's coming out from Nintendo at some point someday. Um, apparently, now th- th- we're not sure if this is true or not. I think it could be anything, but this is supposed to be a picture that the Frag Dolls got for debugging purposes. Okay. You're looking confused. I don't. I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, in in, in this day and age, anybody can fake anything, but. This is true. It could totally be shopped. Yeah. Uh, I guess we won't know. There was a, a leak. Um, who was it? Yeah, I think it was GameStop saying that um, they leaked either on their forums or somewhere about the release date of the Wii U because of uh, accessories. Like, oh. Accessories would be out at such and such a date, uh, the same date as the Wii U, and then they retracted and they're like, no, 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 we didn't say that. It, we're just stating when the accessories would be out. Oh, uh, interesting. I forget what the date was. Hmm. All right, I'll have to look it up. I haven't seen it in my news feed. All right, Geek of the Week. You picked this one, so go for it. Our Geek of the Week this week uh, had a uh, Reddit AMA yesterday, August 29th. Uh, almost brought Reddit to its knees. Really made that site grind. Um, kind of grinded the gears of uh, some... 
uh, you know, people who are against this person saying yeah. that maybe he should be running the country instead of doing uh, a really teenage porn whatever website. <laughs> um, I'm speaking, of course, of Barack Obama. He uh, did a massive AMA yesterday, and rightfully so. Good for him. Um, some people kind of compared this to Clinton going on MTV and doing, you know, playing his saxophone. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. This is awesome. And, and I think I don't see anything wrong with politicians or presidents doing stuff like this, even if it's not like, even if it wasn't his idea, even if it was some teenage staffer saying, hey, you should do this and really coaxing him into it. Mm -hmm. All the better, you know, for him to have an open mind and get, you know, speak directly to the public. Um, you know, don't do this business where everyone sitting in there is handpicked and everyone who asks questions is really groomed. Mm -hmm. you know, it's so fake. Do stuff like this. Go on MTV. Go you know, in a Google Hangout and, and do stuff like that. That's awesome. And it shows that, you know, like I said, you're more open-minded. You're bringing the conversation directly to the people without any kind of crazy middleman or screen in between. And it makes you seem more authentic, I think. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. I think in this day and age, in the 21st century, where everybody is wired together, why not have the president answer questions that were given to him directly from people? I love right. this idea. And anybody who is saying that he should be running the country instead of taking half an hour out of his day to answer questions, I think is being disingenuous about right. what a politician does. Uh, you're right, exactly. And with those town halls, you know, nobody says like, oh, why are you doing a town hall? Why aren't you running the country? Because if you're not sitting in your Oval Office, then nothing gets done and everything just grinds to a halt. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a problem with those, but they have a problem with him going on a website, which he could very well have been doing from the Oval Office. And, you know, everything just running smoothly. Yep. All right, we're out of here. We have a game to play. We do. <laughs> If you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is K A C E Y K A S O Casey Queso. The Queso, not the cheese. <laughs> you can email. You know, I didn't check our email. Oh, actually, I have it now. We didn't get an email. So, uh, the Nexicon at gmail dot com, and of course, we're at the Nexicon dot com. Is where you can find this show and all the others, which I'm trying to converge into one site at some point, which I'm going to do. I wanted to do it this past weekend, but my computer died. Uh, well, that's okay. We'll forgive you. Yeah, we're on the FB. We're on the Goog. I'm so hip and happening. Yeah, right. Um, our uh, YouTube channel, Nexicon Studios, is uh, kind of converted. It has the Infinite Loop show and Nexicon there. Possibly more to come. Yep, possibly. Well, you know, you could put World of Warcast under there or This Week in Trek or all of those. This Week in Trek I do live. I just don't record it. Because it's well, really just me and Daryl's voice, so there's true. really <laughs> no reason. But, uh, yeah, maybe someday. We'll see. All right, thanks for watching listening. And go play Guild Wars. All right, bye.